loyal fans of Coffee Talk with Keats. I hope you are excited like I am because today I have a special treat for you. As we all know, Coffee Talk is mainly about mass media and how it relates to us in our society today. Last week we discussed the importance of the quiz show and how it changed the way game shows were made in the 1960s. And this week we're going to discuss, we're going to take a different route and discuss something that we all have in us, and that is persuasion. A man who is no stranger to the art of persuasion is a personal friend of mine, and that is Kenneth Burke. I hope you guys are as ready as I am because, ladies and gentlemen, here he is: the man, the myth, the legend, Kenneth Burke. Hello, hello. Thank you, thank you. You are just too kind. You don't know how excited I am to be here today. I can't even explain how much of a fan I am of your show. Thank you so much. Kenneth, you are seriously too kind, my man. Well, let's get down to business. First off, for those fans who that are unaware of your work, tell us a little bit about how you have changed the way we think of persuasion. Well, I'm assuming all of us learned early on in high school what the who, what, when, where, and why, and how is in terms of persuasion, right? Well, I came up with a concept called PENTAD and labeled these terms Act, Scene, Agent, Agency, and Purpose. So like the five question structure, I'm assuming that the PENTAD is used to tell a story of some sort, like why people do the things they do? Exactly. So Kenneth, why did you come up with this PENTAD and how? Well, Keats, I've always been interested in the ways people use language and how they persuade others around them to think or act in a certain way. Okay. This is where I came up with the concept of dramatism in the pentad. Then you can see the pentad in many different things in our, in our society, I'm assuming. But to be more specific, I believe you would see them in speeches? Yes, you use the concept of the pentad and apply them to the speech that anyone makes to an audience. Politician, athlete, celebrity, etc. Awesome. Okay. I have an idea, and I'm sure our fans would enjoy this as well, but we should apply the concept of your pentad just so the folks who are watching this at home can fully understand. What do you think, Kenneth? I like your style, Keats. Well, personally, my all-time favorite president to listen and watch speeches is Kennedy. He gave many memorable speeches in his career as president, and one of my personal favorite speeches of his is the one he gave in 1963. Ich bin ein Berliner. Shall we apply the should we apply the pentad to it? What? Two thousand years ago. Two thousand years ago. The proudest post was Kiwis Romanus Sum. Today, in the world of freedom, the proudest post is Ich bin ein Berliner. I, uh, I, I appreciate, I appreciate my interpreter translating my German. There are many people in the world who really don't understand, or say they don't, what is the great issue between the free world and the communist world. Let them come to Berlin. There are some who say, there are some who say that communism is the wave of the future. Let them come to Berlin. And there are some who say, in Europe and elsewhere, we can work with the communists. Let them come to Berlin. And there are even a few who say, that it's true that communism is an evil system, but it permits us to make economic progress. Lost the not Berlin in common. Let them come. Freedom 
has many difficulties. And democracy is not perfect. But we have never had to put a wall up to keep our people in to prevent them from leaving us. You live in a defended island of freedom, but your life is part of the main. So let me ask you as I close, to lift your eyes beyond the dangers of today to the hopes of tomorrow, beyond the freedom merely of this city of Berlin or your country of Germany, to the advance of freedom everywhere, beyond the wall, to the day of peace with justice, beyond yourselves and ourselves, to all mankind, freedom is indivisible. And when one man is enslaved, all are not free. When all are free, then we look and look forward to that day when this city will be joined as one and this country and this great continent of Europe in a peaceful and hopeful globe. When that day finally comes, as it will, the people of West Berlin can take sober satisfaction in the fact that they were in the front lines for almost two decades. men, wherever they may live, are citizens of Berlin, and therefore, as a free man, I take pride in the word, Ich bin ein Berliner. Chills. I have chills. Okay, folks, let's see if President Kennedy followed the Pentad. Let's go through the terms of the Pentad and examine it. The first term in the Pentad is ACT, and what the ACT stands for is what happened and what was the purpose for the act. Basically, the motivation behind the act. So in Kennedy's speech in West Berlin, the act that took place was Kennedy delivering a speech for the purpose of spreading goodwill to the people of West Berlin. Kenneth, is that correct? I couldn't have said it better myself, Keats. Awesome. Let's keep going. The next term in the pentad is scene, and the scene in the speech is from the balcony of Rathaus Schoenaber in Berlin, Germany on June 26, 1963. The speech was important due to the fact that Germany's morale was down because of fear of occupation by the Russians. Kenneth, what do you think? You can see how excited that Kennedy was there delivering the speech from all the cheers in the crowd. So moving. The third term is agent, and the agent is defined as anybody or anything that acts. So in regards to this speech, it's Kennedy. You were really good at breaking down speeches, Keats, I must say. It's a gift, I know. I know. Okay, the fourth term of the Pentad is agency, and agency refers to how much action was accomplished. Kennedy's sole purpose for the speech was to bring hope to the people of West Berlin, and even though the speech was only about four minutes long, he did just that. He accomplished his goal by saying emotional statements to the folks of West Berlin, by telling them not to give up hope, and that the people of the United States are behind them. Well, Keats, did he fulfill his purpose? Yes, Kenneth, he did, because his purpose for being there that day was to persuade the people of West Berlin to not give up hope, like I already previously stated. He did this throughout his speech by appealing to the Germans with phrases he spoke in German, like when he ended his speech, Ich bin ein Berliner, which translates to I am a Berliner. So overall, Kennedy is the perfect example of how the Pentad can be applied to political speeches and how this is an example of persuasion. I really like your enthusiasm with the pen chat, and it makes me feel good when seeing someone appreciate my hard work. Well, I appreciate you coming out today to discuss this with us, Kenneth. You have no idea how much it has meant, not only to me, but to your fans as well. But that's all the time we have here with Coffee Talk with Keats. Tune in next week, folks, for when we will have Dan Glickman, president of the MPAA, to discuss his thoughts of the movie rating system. See you all next week, and thanks for stopping by. Bye-bye.